a number of my listeners have requested that I start doing a Scumbag Lifetime Achievement Award. So uh, I've been thinking about this quite a bit, and my first Scumbag Lifetime Achievement Award is going to be for John Maynard Keynes, and uh, I'll talk about why. Uh, first of all, uh, for source material to research the type of person and ideas and thoughts and philosophy and economic uh, ideas that Keynes had, I highly recommend reading articles on him from the Foundation for Economic Education. There's a bunch of excellent articles on here about Keynesian economics and also Keynes the person. Uh, I will highlight uh, to the search here on Keynes. It'll be in the text box for you guys to do more research and also on the Mises Institute. The Mises Institute has had people uh, trying to debunk Keynes for a very, very long time, and yet Keynesian economics just seems to not die. It keeps coming back in different variations, and uh, you're going to see that people uh, nowadays are still talking about it. They use terms like aggregate demand, liquidity trap, uh, so many other terms that uh, Keynes wrote about uh, stimulus packages, are still Keynesian debt stimulus. So uh, the Keynes is still around. He was one of the most popular thinkers of the 20th century. A lot of people considered him a genius. If he was a genius, he was more like an evil genius, James Bond villain in the, on the lines of George Soros. Uh, and I'm going to show that he was a really bad person with little or no morals. He had no moral compass, and he would screw over friends intentionally to further his ego and his power and his academic credentials. And he was also an enormous hypocrite. So additional uh, sources that uh, on Keynes, uh, there is an excellent uh, biography that Murray Rothbard wrote on Keynes called Keynes the Man. He cites about a dozen different other biographies are cited in this book that Marth, uh, Rothbard, Murray Rothbard wrote about Keynes. Uh, you can go to the Mises Institute website and download this uh, PDF book for free. Uh, another great book is Where Keynes Went Wrong and Why World Governments Create uh, Keep Creating Inflation Bubbles and Busts by Hunter Lewis. Uh, this is available on audiobook and regular book. I uh, highly recommend it. I enjoyed it a lot. The other one is by Henry Hazlitt, Failure of the New Economics. He goes line by line through Keynes's general theory. Uh, a lot of people don't like Henry Hazlitt's work about that that much, but um, I think it's very insightful. But the thing is, Keynes flip-flopped on his ideas. He could change his ideas very quickly. And uh, that's why Hayek and other contemporary economists didn't spend nearly as much time going through debunking all of Keynes' stuff uh, because they always thought that he could totally change his mind. Okay, so now we're going to go into what, what makes Keynes really a scumbag, you know, on the lines of George Soros and so many others. Uh, Mar I, I first found out about this on the Market Skeptics website. So this video was there. I guess it has since been removed. I spent about 15 minutes searching on the Market Skeptics website by Eric DeCarbonell. It's not updated anymore. Rob Kirby's talked about this in the past. Eric DeCarbonell had a couple different videos showing clips and other sources showing how Keynes was a child molester and a pedophile. So before Pizzagate, before any of these other secret pedophile cult cults were exposed in the WikiLeaks Podesta emails, Keynes had been doing that over 100 years ago. Uh, Keynes actually bragged about deflowering 15 and 16 year old boys uh, who are virgins who I guess were not into homosexual stuff and uh, you know, basically raping them and molesting them in his journal. It just gave him glee. He also joined, if you read Rothbard's book here, it talks about this secret intellectual societies of intelligentsia of gay and bisexual intellectuals who hated bourgeois morals and religion. And they were into doing very, very lewd and immoral things. And uh, that was another reason why. Keynes was also an enormous hypocrite. Uh, if he would write in his economic writings and his books about government needs to do this and this and this in his private and personal life, he would normally do the exact opposite. Uh, he wrote uh, in the general theory how uh, savings is a paradox of thrift. Uh, and uh, he wrote he wrote about savings being... Uh, uh, savings being bad for growth of the economy when we know as free market Austrian school co uh, economists that savings and investment are necessary. So Keynes believed in central planning and PhD economists could allocate capital better. And yet in his own personal life, Keynes actually saved, managed millions of dollars. Uh, he saved and accumulated and he invested uh, and was a successful investor. Although there's a number of circumstantial evidence that he traded on inside information and made extraordinarily large profits speculating, whether it was in currency trades, 
for some of his first jobs in the in the Bank of England and uh, England Treasury Department uh, when he was growing up as a young man, and also uh, when he was advising Franklin o, Franklin Delano Roosevelt what to do in 1933 about uh, devaluing the dollar against gold. So Keynes traded on that inside information, as did many other people, uh, rich, prominent people on Wall Street, like Bernard Baruch and, and others. So uh, Keynes is the type of person where he was literally willing to destroy his best friends. Uh, a lot of his academic best friends, who he had been best friends with uh, since his college days, maybe even younger than that. And he was fellow tenured professors with them uh, at universities that he worked at. And if they disagreed with him on anything, he actually went out of his way to get them fired and lose tenure. So he would destroy them in public and get them fired. So not, not the type of person that you wanted to be enemies with, but also not the type of person you really wanted to be friends with. Type of person that you wanted to be very careful how you dealt with him. He was uh, definitely a huge ticking time bomb. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of character flaws. He was drunk all the time. Uh, I actually just on the Keynes search right now found out he was a hardcore globalist and favored eugenics and other stuff. So, I mean, Keynesian economics is one of the worst things, uh, worst things that have been brought into existence, you know, other than hardcore Marxism. It's actually a lighter version of Marxism. It's more of a hardcore fascist economic policy that and Keynes, you know, really didn't like capitalism that much, or at least in his writings. And yet, you know, he wanted to get wealthy and save money and get rich investing. So he, the stuff he wrote about was that capitalism was bad. He really didn't like bourgeois morals or the bourgeois lifestyle. And, uh, you know, he also wrote uh, earlier when he was a younger man about joining, you know, the Marxist proletariat revolution. And, you know, he might have flip-flopped on that, but he has, he agrees. If you go through the, some of the other sources I recommend, especially articles here and Mises and the other three books about Keynes, and these are not, you know, the kiss-ass books from people who love Keynes and worship him. There's a lot of biographies out there that just worship Keynes. Uh, so I would read the other side about Keynes. But, um, you know, I just think he was he was not a good person at all. He was a total hypocrite. And uh, a lot of his economic philosophy has basically destroyed world economies. It's hindered growth. It's, uh, it's given government tremendous amounts of power other than Marxist ideology. And it's uh, given the Keynes was a globalist. Uh, he was in favor of the League of Nations, and uh, also well, the United Nations came along later. But uh, he was in favor of the League of Nations with Woodrow Wilson, and uh, I, I just think he was he was not a good person. So I encourage you guys to go and research and read some of these articles. Look up Keynes Search. I'll put a link to it in the Foundation for Economic Education. Uh, compare what you read in these articles about Keynes with the mainstream narrative about Keynes. It's totally different. He was not in favor of capitalism. He was a big government apologist. Uh, he wanted governments to have control over money and credit. And, uh, you know, he was just an enormous hypocrite. So I could go on and on about Keynes. I just wanted to do a short video here and get you guys to actually research because I know there's still a lot of people that defend Keynes. It's really sad. Uh, you haven't researched Keynes properly. So whenever you hear uh, on the mainstream financial media or talking heads on TV talking about we need to boost aggregate demand, uh, we're in a liquidity trap right now, uh, wages need to be raised higher, uh, you know, these are all things from Keynes, although Keynes with the wages needed to be raised higher, that's from Marx's labor theory of value. That there's a savings glut and it caused a problem, it causes a problem in the economy, but Keynes also agreed with Marx on that. So you can you can look that up, uh, not in any mainstream stuff, but you can go through the Austrian articles and the Austrian sources I showed uh, earlier saying how Keynes was saying that wages should not be allowed to fall. So Keynes had an enormous amount of problems. People still love him and worship him. A lot of people do. Uh, some people, you know, quote him and don't even realize it. Uh, the guy was not stupid. I think he was more of an evil genius. Uh, you know, his moral compass was totally broken. Uh, he was willing to do a lot of things that would have been illegal nowadays. And he was into, you know, these these uh, basically orgy parties, you know, with the elites and stuff like that, that now are like pedophile cults. I'm not sure if they were back then, but, you know, he was into uh, weird pedophilia stuff and homosexuality for a long time. Eric DeCarbonell even removed that video. It's not even there on his website anymore. And it was up there for years. So I'm not sure why he took it down. Uh, I don't know if Eric responds to uh, any emails anymore, but, you know, Keynes uh, is definitely an enormous scumbag. Karl Marx is an enormous scumbag. There's a lot of scumbags nowadays, unfortunately. 
you know, now with the internet, we can uh, find out more about these scumbags a lot faster and find out the truth. Uh, you know, whereas in the past, uh, the things would have been painted about uh, these these global elites, these intelligentsia, uh, like Paul Krugman and things like that. We can find out things faster about these guys. So, you know, the elites, one of the things they need for the elites to maintain power uh, is they need academics. And academics uh, for Marxists and other fascists and central planner globalists, uh, these intelligentsia and academics with junk science and Keynesian economics and, and anti-capitalism ideology, uh, anti-free market, anti-capitalism ideology, they have replaced what was normally conventional religion. And uh, religion had been used in the past by governments as a form of control mechanism. But nowadays we have, you know, these PhD academics and intelligentsia, their certain views of certain things are used as large control mechanisms. So Marxism and fascism and globalism and Keynesian economics are basically bad religions and bad ideologies. And, you know, no matter how many times they're proven wrong, Keynesian economics should have died in the 1970s. Uh, it basically said with the Phillips curve uh, that high inflation and high unemployment could not occur simultaneously. So in other words, stagflation should not have should not have been able to occur in reality. And yet it did. And Keynesian economics should have died. And yet we hear Keynesian economic terms all the time, whether they're stimulus packages, even a supply side stimulus is still government borrowing stimulus, which is still a form of Keynesian economics. It's a little bit different. So uh, tax and spend is a little bit different than borrow and spend, but it's still based off government borrowing, uh, government spending in some capacity, government stimulus, instead of giving the private sector, uh, you know, cutting government spending and cutting taxes, which is the real way for the real economy to heal. Okay, guys, well, that's it for this short video. Hi, everyone. It's Jason Birak of Wall Street from Main Street. Thanks again for tuning into our podcast and for helping us get over 2 million views on our YouTube channel and over 10,000 iTunes downloads per month. We have a special offer for our Wall Street for Main Street listeners that has proven to be a good investment based on plenty of five-star reviews from satisfied customers and independent fashion bloggers. Mo and I recently tried some shoes from a new company which is run by a family of third-generation shoemakers called Grant Stone Shoes. These are classic Goodyear Welch shoes using full-grain leathers from world-renowned tanneries. In a world filled with disposable products, it can be difficult to find items which can be used for years and later passed down to the next generation. Grandstone is a smaller brand going direct to the consumer, which offers unprecedented value. Quality and fit is the cornerstone of their program, and the customer response and reviews confirm this. These are high-quality shoes at a good price for the busy professional who wants to improve their appearance at the office, in the boardroom, or out on the town with your girlfriend or wife. Or... If you're single like me, you know you will look good with these shoes on and maybe impress the ladies with your style and taste. But if the ladies love Obama or Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders and hate free markets or capitalism or entrepreneurs, at least I will look and feel good in my comfy Grandstone shoes. Mo and I have worked out a special offer for our listeners. So when you go to grantstoneshoes.com, enter the code GOLD, that's G-O-L-D, for 10% off any purchase. That's grantstoneshoes.com and enter promo code GOLD.